Hello guys. How are you all? This is Fiction Domain. So we are back with an amazing movie on what if Naruto had an overpowered bloodline called the Hawkeyes. Check out the summary and other details of this movie given in the description. But before we start the story, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we will daily provide the best and interesting what if videos. Also like this video. Now let's start the story. High above the noble ninja city of Konoha, atop the roof of the Hokage Tower, three figures could be seen. Not from the ground mind you, they are far too high up for that. These figures, cloaked in mystery at this point, consisted of a loud pink-headed howler monkey of some type, a raven-haired girl whose aura of superiority could be felt from miles around, and an orange-clad boy who happens to be the star of the story. The girl and the loud monkey seemed to be in some sort of argument with said orange protagonist. If one listened, one could make out these words. Naruto you dumbass. How can we find the cat from up here if we can't even see people from this height? Screeched the monkey who had somehow managed the ability to from coherent sentences. In fact it yelled so loud that it was impossible to tell she was still winded from scaling such a gargantuan structure. A skill mastered through years of practice one would assume. HN, she's right dope. Not even I could see the cat from up here said the girl in a surprisingly mannish voice. Even if I had the Sharingan. The princess of the shadowy locks added. Oh, come on Sakura-chan, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Our citrus-hued hero defended. He had honestly thought the vantage point of the building would be the perfect ruse to find the elusive pet of the Diamos, sp. Wife. Whatever dope. I'm getting down and finding it the right way. I'll come to Sasu-kun. The newly dubbed Sakura-chan exclaimed with Greta vigor. Vigor so great in fact that Sasu-kun had to fight back the tears of unimaginable pain that resulted from the bursting of his eardrums, he has an image to uphold. The two agitated squad mates made their way down the building, using the incredible ninja skill called. Using the stairs. A difficult procedure for the inexperienced, but the rookie of the rear and the smartest Kanoichi of the same class felt they were more than up to the daunting task. Ignoring the grumbling protest of leaving their teammates brilliant perch, or as he would put it really high place so we can see the stupid cat. Naruto still had the idea in his head that this was the perfect plan, and in his quest to show up his unwilling rival and impress his equally unwilling future, Mrs. Uzumaki decided to stay put and try anyway. Now, anyone would be hard-pressed to find a quiet Naruto, but there he was, just sitting and watching the bustling city below him. To those who knew him, the number of which could proudly count two with both hands now, they would find this sight highly disturbing. Truth be told, the sun-kissed dynamo didn't exactly like being loud, but it was an easy way to achieve the one thing he truly wanted. Acknowledgement. Albeit negative, acknowledgement all the same. Being seen, noticed, not just thrust aside, glared at and then forgotten. It gave him some semblance of what he thought to be kinship with the villagers he sworn to protect with his life. The villagers that he was looking over right now like a shepherd over his flock. Muttering a soft don't worry, you're safe. In his beloved home he was roused from his proud musings by a thought that had struck him. Sakura had said that they couldn't even see the people in the village, he however could, with quite some effort, pick out the largest of details on the faces of people he knew. It baffled him. Maybe Sakura-chan needs glasses. He wondered aloud. She did read a lot in class. But, hadn't she passed the mandatory eye test in class during their last week with perfect 2020s vision? They all had, save for the strange Hinata whose eyes were slightly above the rest of the class, thanks to her family's Keki Genkai, the Byakugan. Then why could he see what they could not? While pondering on these things he thought he spotted a small brown dot on the roof of the Yamanaka flower shop. He liked it there, it smelled nice, and the owners would ask him politely to leave, they wouldn't even threaten him. Realizing his train of thought was running off track he concentrated once again. Turning his eyes to the dot with enhanced fervor, he tried to make out what it was. He'd heard of using chakra to increase your visibility at night, so he channeled the ethereal substance to his eyes. Unbeknownst to him his eyes changed, ever so slightly, something amazing. The pupils first dilated almost threatening to swallow his iris entirely. When his once radiant blue eyes were almost completely black with pupil the black mass began to change shape. On the outer edge four points began to pull towards the center of his iris reveling, once again, his cerulean discs. When the four point finally met they left his pupil in a shape reminiscent of a cross or plus sign, although the lines were incredibly thin, making his eye look almost completely devoid of pupils. Completely oblivious to the dull soreness akin to being fatigued in his eyes at the time, Naruto stared in awe as his vision became clearer and crisper, and to his amazement, the brown dot he had been eyeing with relentless interest seemed to blur out of focus and zoom to greet him. Before he had time to wonder what happened to Dot refocused, and he could clearly see his mission's target, as if it were right in front of him. The cat was lying on its side idly pawing its own tail while enjoying the warmth of the sun. 
Not caring, or noticing for that matter, that he had just changed his life, Naruto jumped to his feet, absent-mindedly cancelling his eyes transformation, and with a loud proclamation of Yada. With his fist held high. He turned on his headset and began inform his team of the slippery cat's position. Meanwhile, in the Hokage's office Sirotobi looked up from his ever-present paperwork into the now glowing eyes and smiling face of the Yandame Hokage's portrait, and, with a big smile, he said, it is time. Well the glow promptly faded, however the smile remained. The flashback. The severely scratched Naruto returned a napping cat to the over-exuberant wife of Fire Country's Diamo. Hoping that the lazy animal would be neutered soon, so that he could insult it more thoroughly the next time it inevitably escaped. An act that most found ridiculous, because, who in their right mind walks around exchanging insults with a cat? Well, he would insult it, and it would scratch his face, this resulted in more insults, and the vicious cycle would continue. Upon completion Sakura bathed Sasuke in affection, claiming that her Sasuke-kun had caught the cat single-handedly. Kakashi being their even-minded albeit perverted teacher, assumed that Sakura would make this claim, but Sasuke wasn't denying the praise, so he guessed it was true. Naruto could care less about who caught the damn thing he wanted them to know about what happened to his vision. The exclamations of his ocular feats fell on deaf ears though. I did though. Hell, if it wasn't for me we'd still be looking. The blonde Hokage enthusiast all but yelled. Yeah right dope. You just got lucky the cat obviously would go to the flower shop. The Yamanakas have koi fish in those small pools of water in their shop. Girly McFaggington said. Sasu-kun is right Naruto. Sakura chirped, or attempted to chirp it came out more like fingernails on a chalkboard. But it was on the roof. Naruto deadpanned. He's right you know. Inner Sakura noted. Inner Sakura was promptly ignored. Sasuke seeing he was caught just decided to answer with a friendly well, they wouldn't let it in the store you stupid fool. Ah, the warmth of friendship. Well, friendship for Naruto anyway. Sakura, wanting to back up her love interest, decided to interject yeah, Sasuke is way smarter than you Naruto. Stop lying. Naruto may be a merciless prankster, but he was defiantly not a liar. He detested lying, because when he was young the villagers would lie to him so that they could get under his emotional defenses and hurt him. So he was quite angry at his crush for this statement. What? I'm not a liar. Kakashi-sensei you believe me right? Naruto was hoping beyond hope that his teacher would show some semblance of student-teacher relationship and at least humor him. The Cyclopedia Perv just stated in, cool monotone, Naruto, even if you had binoculars, there is no way you could have possibly seen the cat from that height. Naruto was crushed, but he didn't show it. He just smiled his normal goofy smile and said in his normal loud voice yeah, I guess you guys are right. There was no way I could have seen it. Sasuke was right, I did just get lucky. Well I'm gonna go home now see you guys later. But that he turned on his heel and dashed, no, all out sprinted back to his rat trap apartment, his smile never leaving his face. Needless to say his three comrades were a little confused by his actions. He hadn't asked Sakura out on a date, he ran faster than they had ever seen him away from them, he ended the argument by accepting defeat, and he said that Sasuke was right and he was wrong. Something was very, very, wrong with Naruto, and it scared them. Flash back over. Upon entering his apartment, with the full intention of falling asleep and trying to forget about his traitorous team, Naruto spied a note on his dilapidated table, a note with the Hokage seal on it. Opening the note in a normal fashion instead of just going ape shit on the envelope like he usually did, he found it to be a summons. A mission maybe, there's only one way to find out. So that brings us to his current position of a leisurely walk to the Hokage Tower to visit his favorite old person. He decided to be the bigger man and forget what his team said and to never bring up his eyes again. That way everything would be back to normal. With this line of thought in his head Naruto picked up his pace and slapped his stupid grin on turning it up to full blast. This act accidentally blinded an unsuspecting villager with the misfortune of forgetting his sunglasses. Entering the Hokage Tower and ascending the stairs he came face to face with his favorite secretary. Whoops, did he say favorite he meant his worst nightmare. Now, Naruto got glares nearly 24-7, but hers were cut above the rest. When she sent that sinister stare his way it was like she was grinding her stiletto heel right into his balls. By an act of Kami his imagined testicular torture was cut short today, thanks to the appearance of the Sandame Hokage himself, miraculously changing the glare into a smile almost as big as Naruto's. Releasing his held breath and muttering an extremely soft deus ex machina Naruto, then proceeded to greet them in his regular fashion. Boy. A hey old man, Secretary Nichan. He screamed with all the strength he could muster. The Hokage just smiled a warm smile, the now beaming secretary recoiled into an almost completely covert cringe at the thought of being associated with the demon. Saratobi and Naruto pretended not to notice. Naruto-kun. Please, come in won't you? I have something important to tell you. The elderly master ninja said kindly. 
Sure thing, Gramps. Naruto said whilst passing the secretary's desk. Deciding to have a little more fun with her, he just looked over finding her straining to keep a smile up while looking at him. They made eye contact, and Naruto did what he thought was the funniest thing in the world. He winked and made a quiet kissing noise, while quickly puckering his lips. Needless to say the woman was mortified, and it showed. Laughing like a madman he entered the office and closed the door. Taking a seat in front of the Hokage with a greatly improved disposition, the Hokage began the conversation that would start Naruto's new life. She really hates it when you do that you know. Or maybe not. Yeah, I know. But she's so fun to mess with. So what did you have to tell me Ajiji? Okay, so Naruto started the true life-changing conversation. Well Naruto, I'm going to tell you something that nobody in this village knows. And I want you to promise me you won't hate me after I tell you. Saratobi became instantly serious and businesslike. Sure thing old man. Naruto said with a smirk. He could barely contain his excitement at the thought of being trusted with such a great secret. Okay, Naruto do you know who your parents were? At Naruto widened eyes, the movement to that edge of his seat, and his slow head shake, he obviously understood where this was going. Saratobi continued, well, your mother was an excellent ninja by the name of Kenshi Yazuki. She was an amazing ninja she and your father met while on a mission, and their skills attracted each other like moths to a flame. Here is her picture. He handed the young preteen a photograph of a beautiful woman in her late twenties, with shining green eyes and long brown hair that reached the small of her back. She was smiling happily, the smile seemed at home on her face and blended well with the rest of her soft features. She seemed to be looking at the photographer instead of the camera itself. She was quite clearly pregnant. That picture was taken by your father three weeks before you were born. Yuzuki was a great ninja and an even better person, always kind and helpful if not a little rough around the edges when it came to being polite. She was like a daughter to me. She died giving birth to you my boy, but before she died she wanted you to know that she loved you and your father more than anything else in her world. When she saw you for the first time she called you her little sunshine. At this time Saratobi was on the brink of tears, recalling the memory was a soft spot for him. Naruto had, much to his chagrin, let a tear fall onto the picture, and faster than the Hokage could blink, he rushed to clean the offending liquid away. Upon completing his task he looked at the picture more intently burning the image into his mind for the rest of his life. Kasan, I. Love you too. He thought happily. What about my dad? He said the word as though it were in a different language. Never having one will do that to you. This was the point that Saratobi had been saving for the end for a reason. How would his surrogate grandson take the news? It was now or never. Naruto, your father, the man who died protecting this village, was Yuzumaki Arashi. The fourth Hokage. If Naruto's eyes could have gotten any bigger they would have ripped his head apart. The greatest Hokage who ever lived was his father. At first it was ridiculous, but when he thought about it they did look almost identical. But his own father sealed the Kaiubi inside of him. Why? Why would he do it to his own son, why couldn't he take someone else's child that's why? He couldn't possibly do that to any other family, he could only trust his own son, his own flesh and blood to bear the burden. His father trusted him to take the burden and bear through it. Naruto. The boy had been suspiciously quiet. His head was hanging low, shielding his face behind his golden hair. Naruto, are you alright? I'd understand if you hated me for keeping this from you. But your father loved you as much as your mother did, sealing the Kaiubi hurt him more than any torture could. What happened next the Sandane wasn't expecting. Naruto lifted his head to reveal teary eyes and a true smile. Thanks old man. Thanks for telling me. I understand why my dad did it. I'd have done the same thing. And I couldn't hate you for not telling me, heh, I never asked. The old Hokage just stared at the boy, he wasn't expecting this, but he is dealing with the world number one most surprising ninja. While they were looking at each other they both started chuckling, then laughing, then flat out hearty guffawing. Wiping tears of mirth, happiness, and a small amount of sadness away Sirotobi began again well that's good, but I have a gift from him to you, a box of them actually. He wanted you to have them when you unlocked your bloodline. Bloodline? When did he unlock his bloodline? Furthermore when did he have a bloodline? While all of these thoughts swam and rushed through Naruto's skull, Saratobi had gotten up and retrieved a large box from behind the portrait of the fourth. The box was sealed so only Naruto could open it. He nudged the confused blonde in the ribs to get his attention. Huh? What, what is it? Naruto clearly had forgotten what he was doing when the prospect of a bloodline hit him. Naruto-kun, open this box and all questions will be answered. The sand aim swept his hand in an arc ending with it motioning our hero to the box. Naruto complied and opened the box releasing the several layers of defensive seals. In the top of the box was a medium-sized scroll. Underneath it were many more scrolls. Naruto looked at the Hokage with awe and happiness in his eyes. Popular to contrary belief he loved reading, especially about things that interest him. 
If the library was the only building you were allowed into when you were younger you'd love reading too. The Hokage saw the scrolls and with a sigh and a smile he walked over to his desk and pressing a button on his intercom he said Ina. What do I have scheduled for today? Nothing, you are free all day today, Hokage-sama. The secretly evil secretary answered. Naruto, being Naruto, decided to have some fun. Trying his best to impersonate his oji sans voice, he yelled into the mic thank you Ina, that will be all, oh, and could bring me some coffee. Of course Hokage-sama. She chirped merrily. The real Hokage and his young friend just shared another bout of laughter at the succeeded illusion. Well Naruto-kun, I think we should begin with this scroll here. He said while lifting a scroll labeled read this first in big, red, letters. Q sweat drops. Forgoing any form of formality Naruto rolled the scroll down the length of the room. It stopped mere inches from the wall, unraveling all the way. A twin exclamation of so close. Could be heard from the room's occupants. The scroll read as follows. The Naruto. Hey there boy. This is your old man Kazama Rashi. Yes, the greatest hokage to ever live is your old man. But don't go blabbing it, you'll get fangirls faster than in a chair. Now the old man might have told you my name was Uzumaki. Well, this is true, Kazama is my fake name that I used in my ninja career, so that my enemies wouldn't hurt my family if I ever had one. Only he and my perverted sensei Jiraiya know my real name. Oh, the men your mother Yuzuki. Now, as per my instructions Oji san should have told you who your parents were. Well we love you a lot so don't worry about that. Now in here you will find information about our bloodline the T-A-K-A-G-A-N Hawkeye. It allows us to see much farther than any other being alive. This made us great assassins. You will also learn to increase your speed for our families to just do styles, T-A-M-A-K-E-N bullet fist, and K-A-Z-E-K-E-N wind fist. This package will also contain info on how to train in new elements. We know your chakra affinity is wind and lighting because we tested when you were born. There are many different things in here that will make you strong, but you need to work for it. No son of mine is gonna just get strength just like that. You should also get an inheritance. Now we weren't exactly rich per se, however we did have many possessions as well as a house that you can live in. It ain't a mansion or a clan house so don't get your hopes up. You should have enough money to last for quite some time if you eat like me. If you eat like a normal person you could call yourself rich. You'll need to do missions, but you can use that money for spending money and the inheritance for living money. Now get to reading boy. Bring the Yuzumaki name to greatness. I know you can do it. Oh, and make sure you get yourself a girlfriend. Protecting people important to you will help you get stronger. Plus you're gonna need an heir eventually, why not work on it now? Naruto sweat dropped while Siratobi just laughed. Upon spending the rest of the day reading his scrolls with his Ajiji Naruto learned quite a bit. The reason the Hiroshin worked so well was because utilizing the Takagan and Yuzumaki can hit a target from miles away, with 100% accuracy, with pretty much any kind of thrown weapon. The only problem is having the physical strength to do such a feat. That is where his father's unfinished blueprints came in handy. They were designs for long-range weapons as well as close-ranged ones. Saratobi said if Naruto was willing to study and learn how to finish and eventually build these weapons, he could allow him to use his private workshop. Naruto instantly agreed. He also learned how the Takagan worked. Many tubes are created, out of chakra of course, that act as semi-permeable membranes, allowing one form of matter in the air, such as, say, oxygen, out, while keeping another, say, nitrogen, in. Those tubes are then shrunk, quickly forcing out one while keeping in the other. This would serve the purpose of allowing total internal refraction, such as that of a fiber optics cable, light travels at different speeds through different forms of matter, so a difference in matter is necessary. Thus, the light would be tunneled from far away to right in front of his eyes. And, as this is a bloodline, it was completely instinctual. So he would never have any nasty problems with chakra control. The Tamakin style used the user's speed to weave in and around the opponent's defense, and then delivering a bone-shattering first attack, the user launches into a series of lighting-fast combos, never allowing their opponent any solace until they are defeated. The Kazakin style required the use of a special short-range shunshin that doesn't require seal to dart around the opponent, using the extra speed to deal massive amounts of damage from all sides. He learned the basics of picking off enemies from afar using his eyes he still had to get practice, but he was pretty good with a kunai. But he found that if he truly wanted to use his newfound sniping ability, he would need to increase his stealth and get some new clothes. The two packed the scrolls back up, and Siratobi gave Naruto a little cash to go buy some new clothes with. He also supplied him with the name of a store to go to for good ninja gear. The Hokage then promised that tomorrow after Naruto team training, that he would take the boy to his new house. Naruto also agreed that he would not tell anyone about his new secret family and bloodline, unless he truly trusted them and felt they should know. Not many fit into that category. 
Naruto dashed home as fast as his legs could carry him, and he put the box away. Money in hand he ran into the market district to find Tucci's Ninja Emporium. He found the place with ease by practicing using his eyes from the roof of his apartment complex. Inside he was left staring, mouth agape at the sheer amount of cool shit they had. Swords, knives, poles, shuriken, chains, clothes, med kits, everything any ninja would want. They seemed to specialize in weapons though. He couldn't even figure out where to begin. But stars in his eyes he rushed to the counter. Behind it was a girl, who had twin buns in her hair, reading a magazine with a bored expression, not even noticing her customer. Something about her seemed familiar but what was it? Where had he seen her before then it hit him? Denton? He asked cautiously in case he had the wrong girl. Um, who's there? Oh. Hello, are you a customer? How do you know my name? She asked wary of this weird boy in her family's store. It's me. Naruto. Remember we were in class together. I failed the exam. He mentally berated himself for describing himself through his failure. Naruto Naruto Naruto. Oh yeah. I remember you now you were the really loud funny kid. She exclaimed proud of her own recollection abilities. So, Naruto what would you like? Naruto, still kind of shocked that she remembered him at all but happy that she thought he was funny at least, just responded to the best of his ability, I want new clothes please, thank you. He was confused as to why he came off as a complete imbecile. Denton just giggled at his response and ushered him through a doorway on the right that's the clothes section, go right ahead. He nodded and wandered over into the room labeled clothes and that's when he remembered something, he'd never bought clothes in his life. Sticking his head through the doorway he voiced his dilemma on oh, Denton. Could you please help me, I've never done this before. Denton was a little bewildered by that question. 1. A guy asking a girl to help him shop for clothes, ludicrous, didn't he know the hazards? 2. He's never bought clothes before. Then she remembered that he was an orphan, he probably only had a few clothes that the orphanage or his foster family gave him. But even then it was highly unlikely that he'd never gone shopping for clothes before. Didn't you ever go shopping with your foster family or the orphanage? She only understood what she had asked after she had said it and saw the clear look of pain smear itself across his features before he wiped it away with a big, stupid, smile. He realized she must have been suspicious and didn't mean to ask it in such a blunt way, so he silently forgave her. Before she could apologize he just said in an even tone I've lived alone since I was four and I've only had the clothes that the hookage gave me. Don't worry about it though, if you don't want to help I can do it myself sorry for bothering you. The news hit her pretty hard. Alone? Since he was four? How did he possibly live like that and he was apologizing to her? It made her feel low for bringing that up to him. So she decided to help as much as possible. No, no, I want to help please I'm sorry. Really you'll help thanks a lot Ten Chan. And don't worry about what you said, I'm sure it was an accident. His mood brightened instantly at the thought of her helping him. She let the most minuscule of blushes cross her face at the name. No one called her that, she assumed it was because she was tomboyish and she loved weapons. She just dismissed the thought considering it in his nature to be nice to people who were kind to him. He followed her through the aisles, saying that he wanted something to help him blend in with his surroundings, as well as being comfortable. When they were done he four more jumpsuits, two with a green and brown forest camo pattern, a grey city camo pattern and a brown tan-ish desert camo pattern. When asked why he wanted the city and desert patterns, he simply stated that a ninja should always be prepared, a philosophy that she agreed with fully. He also got three bucket hats that matched their respective jumpsuits to cover his blaring blonde hair. A pair of black steel toot boots, some black fingerless gloves with metal plates on top, as well as some undershirts and other necessary undergarments. He he underpants. He also found a cloak that had the appearance of leaves on it so that he could hide his body, face, and anything he was carrying, and it made him look mysterious he said. Tenton rolled her eyes, men. After paying for everything he asked if there was room where he could change into his new forest suit. Why? Afraid I might see something embarrassing. Tenton laughed. The entire time they had been shopping they were joking back and forth getting to know each other again. She learned about his dream of being Hokage, a dream she thought it to be a mite lofty, but a nice dream nonetheless. She also found out that he was going to begin training in speed, she suggested finding her teammate to help him. No. I'm afraid you might see something you would like. He teased back. This was the first time he had ever truly flirted with a girl and found that it was fun and really funny. He learned that she loved weapons and was a crack shot with anything you could throw, he made a mental note to ask for help if he needed it. He also found that her team was taught by Mido Guy the over-exuberant green beast of Kanoha, he made another note to find him and ask for to just do in speed training. And apparently she worked in this store with her father Tuchi Kento, losing her mother to childbirth. The pain that they shared and they sympathized with each other. They both laughed heartily at their faux flirtation, and she pointed out a dressing room. 
He went in and came out 15 seconds later wearing his new jumpsuit, his cloak thrown back over his shoulders like a cape, and his forest cap covering all his hair, as well as shading his eyes. His forehead protector had been tied loosely around his neck. Only a few rouge strands of gold were seen in front of his eyes, he didn't seem to mind. She had to admit, he did look mysterious. But, she'd never tell him that. How did you do that so fast? She pondered aloud. Hey, when you wear a jumpsuit all your life you learn how to change pretty fast. He answered while shrugging. She only nodded, it is a jumpsuit after all. He handed her his old jumpsuit and she looked at it with mild disgust. It hadn't been washed very often. Naruto kun I'm touched that you would give me your old favorite jumpsuit but how often did you wash this? She asked holding the cursed piece of clothing at arm's length. Laughing at her actions he finally managed to speak Ano, probably once a week. I needed it the rest of the time. And, I don't want you to have it. I want you to burn it please. That thing was gonna get my ass killed. She could only laugh, it was funny because it was true. Well, I gotta go train Ten Chan. I'll see you around. He slung his full bag of clothes over his shoulder while waving goodbye. She waved back and before he could make it out the door she said, don't forget to come back. He turned and smirked before saying of course. If I'm gonna be Hokage I need all the gear I can get. He gave her a thumbs up before leaving. Not noticing the second small blush he gave her. When he does that he looks almost as cool as Niji. She thought no, impossible no one's as cool as Niji. With a sigh she went back to reading just like before, only now she had a big smile on her face. Back with Naruto he was walking back to his apartment with a true smile on his face. Today had been great. He unlocked a bloodline, found out about his parents, got lots of cool training material, and made a friend. He looked towards the fourth face on the Hokage monument and whispered don't worry dad, I'm gonna be great. While thrusting his fist towards his farther stone visage. Naruto sat cross-legged and cross-armed on his bed. Staring directly at the box of scrolls left to him by his father. He had planned on going out and training today after his team meeting, but it seemed like such a waste to leave all of this here, not being read. That's when he was stricken with inspiration. He'd just leave some cage bunch in here and they'd take notes and give them to him when he came back. He was such a genius. Forming his favorite seal, he created an easy 20 bunchins all with identical smug smiles of self-satisfaction. So, we all know the plan right? They all nodded. Then in complete unison, 21 fists were raised to the heavens and 21 identical cries of Yash. Could be heard throughout the entirety of Fire Country. Several people were deafened by the explosion of sound. Naruto promised to be back by 6 that night because that was when the Hokage could find time to show him his new house. Quickly running out of his apartment his clones found themselves eager to read the scrolls, when one turned to the other and asked, you think he'll ever figure out what we learn, he learns. His depelginger of a companion just shrugged, he'll figure it out eventually. Well he better. I'm not gonna fucking take notes all day. The other clone seemed to agree. But the sigh the second clone just nodded fine, just make sure we get this all done. He reached into the box and went all the way to the bottom. He felt something that didn't feel like a scroll. Pulling it out he found a two small wristbands, and looking further he found two more that were slightly larger. There was a note on one of the wristbands. Hey Naruto. These are chakra weights. The more you put into them the more weight your body feels. They must all be in place for these to work. When all four are on and you put chakra in them, they make your whole body feel the weight not just your arms or legs. Think of it like increasing gravity. It will make Sue fast. Be sure to wear them at all times, that way your body is always conditioning. You will become a chick magnet in no time. All Naruto's present did a collective sweat drop. Sighing again number two got up and said simply I guess I've gotta go bring these to him. Don't forget to tell him about the learning thing. Number one shouted as number two left the rat trap apartment. Well fellas let's get to Riadin. I call the blueprints. No way. I had him first. Hey I want chakra control. It's mine. This is gonna be a long day. Back with real Naruto. Naruto had made his way to the Team 7 bridge early because he wanted to try out his camouflage in the nearby trees. He crept up into a suitable tree and hid himself to the best of his abilities by wrapping his cloak around him. Surprisingly he blended almost perfectly. He had been there for about three minutes when one of his clones had come by with four things in his hands. Upon closer, Takagan enhanced, inspection he found them to be rings of some kind, almost like sweatbands for your wrists. Because of their chakra link the clone was able to spot him, and he made his way to his creator. When he made it to his blonde god he handed him the weights and Naruto just said, what the hell. Dispel me and it will be completely explained. The clone said tiredly. Okay. With that Naruto drew his fist back and slammed the wannabe right smack in the face, this was not exactly expected by the clone, but it should have been. Making said wannabe disperse into a cloud of smoke. 
Naruto was slightly confused when all of a sudden all the information that the clone had wanted to tell him came rushing into his skull. He understood how the weights worked, and he remembered the clone's conversation. This was an amazing revelation. With stars in his eyes he shouted so cool. Straight up to Kami's domain. Remembering his plan to hide he quickly recovered his old hidden position while lacing the weights on. He decided to activate them when he started training, he might put too much in and break the branch. It had been about 10 minutes when his secret crush had finally made her way to Team 7's meeting area. Sakura looked around and, finding no one, she sighed and took her seat underneath Naruto's tree. Naruto's breath hitched, he never got to see her this close before. Using his new eyes he inspect her face a little more. She did indeed have a larger forehead than most, but what did he care, he had a larger inner demon than most. She had pink hair that no one else in the village had, and he had blonde hair that no one else had except maybe Eno, but she doesn't count. She had green eyes, he had blue eyes, but that doesn't matter. It was a match made in heaven. Poor, poor deluded fool. While scrutinizing the object of his affection the lucky monkey started thinking about hers. She wished that Sasu Kun was here with her, and then they could fall in love without that stupid Naruto round to ruin her life. Unfortunately, or fortunately, she had voiced her opinion. The unknown watcher had felt an extreme pain right where his heart should be, and his stomach felt awful. Sure, he had bugged her a bit, but he didn't ruin her life did he? He decided that all he needed to do was think positive, and it would defiantly work out. So he just decided to try that while tuning out Sakura's rant about how much she hated him. He was having a difficult time. Well the pink-haired Kuno bitch I listed the reason why she hated Naruto and she loved Sasuke-kun. Said Sasuke was gloomily making his way to the field. In an attempt to ignore his eternal love's hate rant Naruto used his family's ability to watch his rival. Sasuke was walking at a sedated pace to the meeting area, brooding all the way. The amount of angst seemed to flow from him in waves. Naruto could swear he saw a flower wilt when the black-headed Avenger walked past it. I hope he never figures out how to use that as a weapon. Naruto thought to himself. Spending the next few hours in total silence was the hardest thing Naruto had to do. Watching his teammates he found that all he wanted to do was to tell Sakura-chan to stop obsessing over a jerk and to take said jerk and shake him until he stopped being so damn antisocial. When Kakashi finally arrived he noticed something he only heard one cry of your late. And liar. And it just sounded terrible compared to the fun sound he got out of hearing it with Naruto's voice mixed in. It really sounded much better than the banshee-like scream of his female student, it took a lot of self-control on Naruto's part not to give away his position. But afterwards he was proud of himself. Dot that was another thing, he couldn't find Naruto at all. Hey, where's Naruto? Came the expected question. Before either of his other students could say, who cares a bundle of leaves seemed to fall from the sky in between the teacher and his students. They all took defensive positions when the bundle started to spin in place at a slow pace. It unraveled to reveal someone in complete camo and an almost blinding smile. Right here, Kakashi-sensei. The person shouted. Naruto. Team 7 said in three-part harmony. They were all surprised by his change in attire, but what shocked them the most was that he was able to hide from all of them. Yup. What's up? He was brimming with pride at the fact that even his Jounin sensei couldn't find him. Heh, I'm gonna kick so much ass. He thought proudly. Somewhere in the afterlife a blonde-haired spirit smiled at the sight of his son, evading the detection of his former pupil, he's gonna kick so much ass. He stated proudly. H.N., so you change clothes, so what dope? Guess who said. Yeah, so what? Guess who's number one fangirl added eloquently. Eh, you're just jealous, team. The would-be Hokage retorted. Well, now that that's over I just want to let you know that the Hokage asked me to give you the day off today. Kakashi said with his upside-down you smile. Sasuke was mad, he could have been training to kill him. Sakura was ticked that her teacher made them wait for two hours to give them the day off. Naruto was ecstatic, he would have all day to train. No stupid missions. Sweet. Thanks old man, Kakashi-sensei. With that he ran off into the forest to go train. No Naruto I won't go out with you. Sakura exclaimed agitatedly. But to everyone's surprise Naruto hadn't asked her out. She looked to Sasuke to find him with his eyes wide. When he saw her looking at him he shook his head no and walked away. She followed, of course, but she wondered why Naruto would suddenly stop, it wasn't in his nature to give up. Maybe she had been too mean to him or, maybe he heard me. She gasped. She had said some terrible things about him, she didn't mean for him to hear her. It's not that she liked Naruto, it's that she liked all the attention she got from him that Sasuke would never give her, she didn't want two teammates who wouldn't talk to her. The Kashi smiled under his mask while looking where Naruto had run off to, maybe his student was growing up. While Naruto ran he mentally smacked himself, one. He forgot to ask out Sakura-chan. 
She may not like him very much and would have said no anyway, and he may have been hurt, but they were meant for each other, weren't they? 2. He forgot his training regiment scroll. Making a clone he asked it to go home and get the scroll and meet him back at his special training spot, an open area in the forest that he was sure no one would use. Unknown to him was the reason why no one used it, it had been designated as the demon's training grounds by the adult population of Kanoha. Before entering his clearing he stopped and decided to turn on his weights. Using as little chakra as he could he pushed it to one of his wristbands. Apparently the least he could do was too much. The bands all glowed blue for a moment before the number 200 appeared on the band on his right wrist. His body crashed to the ground with a low thud. Shit, this is freaking heavy. But, I'm not going back. Only forwards from now on. With his confidence soaring, he forced himself off the ground slowly, while making his way to the training grounds. When he arrived he was shocked to find someone there training already. He was wearing a green leotard with orange leg warmers and had a black bowl cut hairdo. The most disturbing part of his image were his extreme eyebrows. They looked like fucking caterpillars. Shrugging off the intruder he decided to start his own training with stretching while waiting for his clone. It wasn't his property so he couldn't kick the kid out and the kid couldn't tell him to leave, well he could, but Naruto wouldn't listen. The brushy browed weirdo kept punching the logs and Naruto kept stretching. The kid was too enraptured with his training to notice Naruto. After a few minutes of silence, excluding. Of course, the sounds of fist meets log, a few more people made their way to the clearing. Sweet Kami can't a guy find a training ground all to himself for once. He was roused from his thoughts when a feminine voice called to him. Naruto-kun? Is that you? What are you doing here? Hm, sounds familiar. Where had he heard her before? Both he and the green guy turned to investigate and were met with a pink wearing girl donning two buns in her chocolate hair. Ah, Ten-chan. I came here to train. Why are you here and who's that with you? He asked while continuing to stretch his legs. Oh, this is she began. Iwuganiji interrupted her stoic girly-haired teammate. And she began. But was once again interrupted by. The beautiful green beast of Kanohamido the green beast began. I sensei Finished the weird kid. Who had run over to his idol. When he looked at them Naruto realized that they looked almost exactly the same. They started hugging and all hell broke loose. Lee. I sensei Lee. Dai sensei Lee. Dai sensei Needless to say Niji and Tenten were embarrassed beyond belief at their squad mates and sensei's actions, and they expected Naruto to be shocked or disturbed, but when they looked over to see his reaction, they were the ones who were shocked. He had a sad faraway look in his eyes, and a hair-turning smile on his face, while he watched the spectacle. Niji was completely thrown for a loop as to why he wasn't running away in terror while screaming something about his eyes. Tenten almost had the same reaction, but then she remembered what Naruto had said the day before. He has been alone his whole life, he probably wishes that he had someone that close to him too. Her heart felt sick at the thought of anyone being so alone that they were actually envious of Lee and Guy's relationship. She chose that moment to stop the sight before Naruto felt even worse. She coughed very loudly into her fist to draw their attention. It didn't work, so instead of trying it again and hurting her throat, she waltzed over and landed a blow directly onto Lee's head. That stopped the all-day hug fest fucking fast. Naruto mouthed a silent thank you to her, and she just smiled while nodding. Yes, Tenten-chan, what is it? Lee asked with a happy voice while tears were brimming in his eyes. We have a guest my youthful student. Exclaimed Guy. We do sensei where? Lee asked excitedly. Lee, he's been behind you the whole time Niji deadpanned. Really turning around Lee spotted our hero who had a blank expression on his face. Your skill and stealth is incredible. You must be genius to be able sneak up on me. Nah, I'm no genius, just a hard worker. Niji smirked, Tenten just chuckled while slapping her forehead. He could have described himself in any other way, but knew oh he had chosen that particular expression. Almost as soon as he finished his sentence both Guy and Lee came to a screeching halt in front of him. Yosh. You are truly youthful Naruto-kun. Guy shouted. The flames of your youth burn with such youthful exuberance. Naruto-kun, you will be my eternal rival. Lee exclaimed with equal vigor. Together we will show the world that a hard worker can exit a genius. Uh. Okay. Naruto said a little weakly, he hadn't expected this reaction in the least. Yosh. I will work harder than you Naruto-kun for if I can't I'll run 1000 laps around Konoha. Lee yelled. And if Lee can't finish that then I will guy was about to continue the ritual of extreme self-inflicted punishment training, when what Lee had said finally registered with Naruto. He got right in Lee's face and started to yell back like hell you will bushy brows. If you beat me I'll give up my dream of being Hokage. At this point he was sticking an accusing finger right in Lee's face. I'll train ten times harder than you and then we'll see who's the better ninja. 
Naruto had taken Lee's exclamation as an insult to his ability as a ninja. Yash. Naruto-kun you truly are my eternal rival. Lee cried happily as he was raising a shaky fist, while twin waterfalls of tears spouted from his eyes. Your youth burns with a passion equal to my cute pupils Naruto-kun. Guy was in an exact replica of Lee's current stance. Please allow me to train you Naruto-kun. Really you'll train me him? All Gen and present Ask shouted. Of course. One with youthful exuberance such as yours would be an honor to train. Guy said happily. Naruto was shocked, he said it would be an honor to train him, him. But surely this man was old enough to know about his resident. But, you don't hate me. Hate you? Why would Guy sensei hate you Naruto-kun? Lee asked in a hybrid indoor-outdoor voice. Yes, why would I hate you Naruto-kun? Guy wondered aloud. Tenten and Niji both had the same question, but felt no need to repeat it again. All Naruto did in response was take off his hat and remove his cloak which was obscuring his face a little. After revealing his striking blonde hair and his whisker marks he just pointed to his face. The others were confused, but Guy instantly recognized him as the Kaiubi boy and understood his question fully now. He had never really known the boy, so he had never had an opinion about him. He had known however, about the hate and scorn his village had shown the boy. Upon seeing the quiet intensity of the pain I his eyes Guy was a little sick to his stomach at the thought of his beloved village treating anyone so harshly, especially one of its loyal ninja. He had heard about the boy through Kakashi, wait. Isn't my eternal rival Kakashi your sensei? Surely he should be training you? Naruto flinched a little, this guy obviously didn't want to train him, well, he kind of needs to train Sasuke, but I don't mind. I can get stronger by myself. But if you don't want to help me I'm sure I could find another sensei. Plus my dad said that I should get a few senseis. I was pissed at Kakashi's actions, but he didn't show it because he would talk to him later. Tenten, Niji, and Lee decided to ask Naruto about his odd question later. Oh, no. Of course I'll help Naruto-kun. But because I am not your official sensei I need to know what you want to improve. Guy said to show the boy that he truly didn't hate him. Really, you really will. Thank you Guy sensei Naruto shouted while tackled the jown into the ground. After Guy regained his senses and both Naruto and Lee had calmed down, he asked Naruto to list his needs. Well, I need to work on speed and strength and accuracy. Lee and I can help you with strength and speed Naruto-kun. Tenten-chan can help you with accuracy, she's the best shot I know. He proclaimed proudly. Tenten beamed with pride while she threw a kunai dead center into a target over 50 feet away. Now, Naruto-kun, do you have any weights? They are essential to your training. Sure I do sensei. I'm wearing them right now. Excellent. May I inquire as to how much weight my new youthful student is wearing? Guy asked eagerly. Lee was also interested in knowing how much weight his new rival was wearing. Tenten was mildly interested and Niji could care less. Um about 200 combined I think. Guy was ecstatic that his new student could handle such weight. Lee has excited that his rival was wearing so much weight. Tenten was shocked he could have so much weight. Niji was skeptical that he could hold so much weight. Impossible, I see no weights on you. You're lying. Niji said in a cool control tone. As much as Tenten didn't want to label her new friend as a liar, it seemed like she had no other recourse. Besides Niji was always right. Lee couldn't help but be shocked that his rival would stoop so low. And Guy was just eyeing his pseudo-student's wristbands. Naruto turned to the stuck-up Hayuga and said I. Am. Not. A liar. With enough ice to freeze hell over. He held up his wristband, with extreme difficulty. These are special chakra weights. When all four are on the person the amount of chakra they put in is transferred to weight that is spread out over their entire body. I am currently under 200 pounds of pressure at all times. I am not a liar. And with his explanation concluded he curtly flipped Niji the bird. Amazing Naruto-kun. Can you please give me some of those weights? Lee asked with stars in his eyes. Guy also looked excited at this prospect. Sorry Lee, as far as I know these are the only ones made and they were given to me by someone special who wants to remain secret. Lee and Guy's expression fell considerably. But, but, uh, I'll figure out some way to make more of them. It's a promise. Lee and Guy perked up. Naruto had said that in attempt to cheer up his new sensei and rival, he didn't want them to dislike him, but he had no idea how to do that. But now he had to do it. Why did he always get himself into these situations? Really Naruto can you do that for me? Lee asked, not many people were that kind to him, especially after just meeting him. They often said he was weird for some odd reason. Sure thing bushy brows. I never take back my words. It's my nindo. Guy smiled at his newfound student's bravado and spirit. Niji was still fuming at the disrespect Naruto had shown him, and Tenten had been trying to calm him down, in hopes of getting on his good side, but she still smiled at Naruto's proclamations. Shortly after that a second Naruto made his way into the clearing. 
Ignoring the strange looks from everyone in the clearing he walked up to the original. Hey boss. Just got your scroll here and some ramen. Figured you'd like something to eat so you can keep your energy up. Oh and number two says you need to make a replacement for number one cause you smoked him. Taking the scroll and Raymond while nodding he said, oh sure, thanks for the Raymond. He put the scroll and cup on the ground and then proceeded to make another clone. The two clones marched off back to Naruto's apartment while the others were still gawking. What? What do you mean what? What the hell was that thing? Tenten exclaimed. Naruto-kun here is a master of cage bunshin. Guy said with pride in his voice. He knew Naruto wasn't his official student, but he would be teaching him so that was enough for him. Naruto rubbed the back of his head and blushed a little at the praise well, I wouldn't say Master Bude, I guess you could say that if you really wanted to. Haha. <laughs> Naruto-kun using a cage bunshin you could accelerate your accuracy training tenfold by practicing with ten bunshins. Guy said while thinking up ways this could help Naruto's thinking. Really could it help with chakra control too? Naruto asked yelled. I suppose it could. Because chakra control is just learning how to control it and it doesn't change anything physically. To everyone's surprise it was Niji who had said this. However your stores wouldn't increase you have to do that yourself. Um, I'll need to learn chakra control from somebody then could you teach me Niji? Naruto asked really not expecting anything from the Byakujin user. Only if you teach me cage bunshin. To say everyone was shocked was an understatement. No one had seen this coming. Naruto always being the first to recover simply smirked. Hein, Niji Haim. Naruto said stating his opinion on giving away his prize technique. Tenten was pissed that Naruto would insult her secret crush after he had just said he would help him. HN, whatever Naruto no Bakaniji said with a smirk to match the blondes. Another unexpected reaction. Guy looked to his new student and smiled he brings change with him. He remembered when Aruka used to hate Naruto, but now the scarred Chunin treated the kid like his little brother. Naruto was thinking something along the lines of is there a team in every squad? Well I guess he's better than Sasuke. But, if what Guy Sensei said is true then I can increase my chakra control and accuracy by 100 fold. But, they don't need to know that. He wanted to keep some of his techniques and strengths secret after all. Naruto opened up his scroll while Guy was telling his youthful students their training regiment for today. This is what it read. Hey there. For training to increase speed and strength use those weights I gave you. Make sure to do 100 push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, 200 jumping jacks, 300 hundred punches with each arm into a log, 300 kicks with each leg into a log, and 20 laps around the village. Then anything else your sensei should tell you. As for accuracy, just practice throwing, remember follow-through. Increase weight every week by 50 pounds, and increase the number of each exercise each week by 50 as well, except for laps, increase those by 5. He can't be serious. Insert massive sweat drop here. Um, he didn't give away his name or my relation to him, I guess that is so that my sensei can read it. What do you have there Naruto-kun? Guy asked while he walked over to the blonde dynamo. The scroll from my fi avarite hokage. Phew, nice save. He gave it to me to help with my training. Well, this certainly does seem extensive for conditioning your body, you would you need to learn a tojutsu style my youthful student. Guy said while scrutinizing the scroll. Oh, I have my clones at home memorizing the forms, and when they do I'll practice them after I get faster. Naruto said. Good, well then, let's get started my youthful pupils. Asu. Cried Lee and Naruto in unison. Tenten giggled at his antics while he tried a very slow and lopsided salute. That night the Hokage paid Naruto's apartment a visit. In his pocket he had the keys to Naruto's new house, and on his face he had a happy smile. He knocked on the door. After a few moments the sounds of someone rushing around and tripping, quite a few times, were heard. Naruto almost ripped the door off its hinges to reveal a chuckling hokage. Hey Ajiji. Hello, Naruto-kun. Excited. He asked knowing full well the answer. Oh hell yeah. Just as I thought chuckled the old sandame. Well, shall we go? Naruto then proceeded to, slowly, gather up all the things he had packed before the hokage arrived, clothes, food that's it. After saying good riddance to a place that held only bad memories, they walked down the street toward the forest. After walking into the forest for a little while they came across a house. The outside was a light grey color with a green metal roof and green shutters on the windows. It was two stories and had a basement as well as an attic. There were three bedrooms with a bath in each. The living room big enough to comfortably fit about 20 people, and it was adorned with three large couches, a recliner, a few bean bags, and a large television as well as a fireplace. The study had many books ranging from chakra control to advanced physics to sewing, as well as a large oak desk and a few filing cabinets. The kitchen was large enough for a few people to be in there without getting in the cook's way, it had a fridge and a double oven plus a microwave. 
The dining room had a formal feel to it, and a large table could seat as many people as the living room. The master bedroom had large heated water, as well as a big TV on the opposite wall, a dresser, a wardrobe, and a walk-in closet. The other bedroom was more of a kid's room, and the last bedroom was obviously a guest room, but it still was very nice and cozy. The bathrooms all had the essentials as well as tub showers, the master bathroom however, had a jacuzzi for relieving muscle stress. The basement was actually a large dojo-like area with special places for storage scattered around the edges, his clones could practice in here while he was out. The attic was just a normal attic, but it could be turned into an extra room if the need be. The Hokage had had several Genin teams come and clean the house, as well as to restock the kitchen and wardrobe. Naruto now had several pairs of casual clothes, as well as formal attire. After inspecting the whole house Naruto was on the verge of tears. He hugged the old Siratobi and thanked him profusely. When the Hokage finally had to leave, after having some raiment to celebrate of course, Naruto told him to come by and enjoy some time off every once in a while. The blonde air made his way into the master bedroom and, after a quick shower, drifted off into a happy sleep about Raymond, training, and a crying Sasuke. And so it started. Every day after the team meeting Naruto would go meet Team Guy and depending on the day would train with a different member. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 20 of Naruto's clones would practice with Tenten. And every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday 20 would practice with Niji. Well every day aside from Sunday, he took that day off, you can't train all the time, even with his stamina and healing factor you need to rest every once in a while. The original would train with Lee and or Guy in speed and strength after doing his father's designated warm-up routine. Unknown to the others however was that Naruto would send an extra 200 to Niji's practice in secret watching with their Takagans from afar, as well as an extra 200 to Tenten's. This had four advantages. 1. He got extra training and improved faster. 2. He learned how to read lips. 3. He increased his chakra stores. 4. He improved with his Takagan. While the first 120 clones would practice what Niji or Tenten were teaching. The other 100 would practice with different ranged weapons until he mastered them, then he would move on to the next. Currently he had mastered using a slingshot, a blowgun, and he was currently training with a bow. This along with the extra 100 he always left at home to study, made his already massive store even larger. He also had his clones use the Hokage's private workshop to build the weapons he used, as well as his ammo for each weapon. The others were astounded at his progress. They were also impressed with his will to keep going. He never once backed down from training and always made the effort to do one extra lap or ten extra kicks when it was clear that he was just as exhausted as them. This inspired the others to work harder as well as change each of them. Niji became a little less antisocial, emphasis on little, but it was still noticeable. Spending several days a week surrounded by 20 Naruto's who tell jokes and mess around because they have nothing better to do while practicing will do that to you. Tenten became a little more dedicated in her work and it showed through the fact that she too now wore weights. Lee had become more like Naruto, but not by much, but he was always working to surpass his rival, so they pushed each other further and further. Naruto, after being around Lee and Guy, found that, that people liked it when you were quieter, so he toned it down a bit, he was still loud, but not nearly as loud as he used to be. He also decided that when he was on a mission he should try and be quieter and more professional, it would make being a ninja easier, and he would still get to be himself outside of a mission. Guy couldn't have been prouder. Team 7 was completely oblivious. The only difference they could see was that Naruto had stopped picking fights with Sasuke well, picked less fights with Sasuke, and asked Sakura out less. Kakashi was curious as to the reason behind the change in his student, he decided to look into it some other time. Naruto was currently in the Hokage's office with his original team, complaining about the D-rank missions they'd been having. Hey, Ajiji you know that I can handle at least a C-rank mission, come on. Iruka was furious at the disrespect his little brother was showing the Hokage Naruto. Show some respect at this point Ruka rants, and I don't remember what he says, but we all know what happens. Finally the Hokage caved and gave them their first C-rank mission. Escorting Tazuna to his bridge and wave. At this point the old drunk waltzed into the room. Stumble being the correct term actually. These brats are supposed to protect me. They look weak especially the short green one. Naruto whose face was barely seen through his cloak and hat, just did the opposite of what everyone present thought he would do, ha ha ha. That the best you got you drunken bastard. Come on hit me with something new. Everyone save Tazuna was completely slack-jawed. The Kashi had even been ready to sit on Naruto to stop him from killing the man. The ha ha, you got some balls on you brat. I like ya. Glad to be working with you. He extended his hand the young ninja who shook it in a firm grip. The feelings mutual, except I'm not into guys. They both started laughing at this point. Everyone else was still trying to recover when the Hokage began to laugh as well, then Aruka, then Kakashi. 
Sakura refused to laugh because Sasuke-kun wouldn't either. Well, he, can we get going now sensei? Naruto asked wiping away a tear of mirth while the laughter died down. Sure thing. Meet at the gate in half an hour with everything you need for a few days of travel. Kakashi said. He really has grown up thought three adults in the room. Yosh. I'll get there before you Sasu-chan. Well, he's still twelve. What did I expect? Thought the same three adults. Heh, Chan, classic thought one bridge builder and how dare he call our Sasu-kun that. Yeah. Thought one possibly naturally pink-headed Kinoichi. HN, yeah right dope. Bring it on. Sasuke and Naruto both got into race positions and looked at Sakura expectantly. Oh. Uh, ready Kakashi hurriedly opened the door, said he pulled Tazuna out of the line of fire, go. The only thing to register that either of them had left was the cloud of dust and sonic boom. Thirty minutes later Naruto and Sasuke were seen running from opposite directions toward each other. They skidded to a halt and were mere centimeters apart in front of the gate. I win. They both shouted, quite uncharacteristically for Sasuke. I am obviously the winner dope. So are you are Sasuke-chan. And why is that? Because you're in a chair. Naruto said while rolling his eyes. Of course. My clan is better than your clan. Sasuke stated matter-of-factly. Says you. You are the only one of your clan left, and I'm the only one of my clan left. That makes our clans equal. Naruto pointed out with his hands thrown up to the sky, they quickly fell back down to his sides. Well, I have a bloodline Sasuke was sure he had won. Am, I'm not gonna reveal the tack again just to show up Sasuke in an argument. Oh yeah then let's see a tough guy. Please don't have it activated, please don't have it activated, please don't have it activated he chanted in his head. HN, like I'd show you. That should shut him up. You know, you think he'd have learned by now. Yeah right. You just haven't unlocked it. Ha. Our clans are equal. Naruto yelled triumphantly. Sasuke just hum fat opting to end the argument there. Naruto stuck his hand out to Sasuke. The Avenger just stared at it like it was a tentacle. Good race team. We should have another sometime. Naruto said in a friendly tone with a grin. After a minute or so of deliberation Sasuke grasped it, sure thing dope. But don't expect me to go easy on you next time. Sasuke tightened his grip. Naruto reciprocated the action. This continued until they were both red in the face with exertion. Ahem. If you two are done holding hands I'd like to get home please. Tazuna interrupted their little contest. If either of them had blushed it was hidden by the shade of red already on their faces, although with Naruto, you could hardly tell already because of his cloak-hat combo. But Naruto was never one to be outdone. But I thought you liked seeing boys hold hands old man. Naruto and Tazuna shared a small laugh, and he gave Naruto a noogie. Hey quit it your pit smell worse than your breath you old booze hound. Yes, well Tazuna san it would be best if you let Naruto go so we could get going. With that they all exited the village, never to be seen again. I'm just kidding. While they were walking Sakura had made a startling discovery. Naruto. Yes, Sakura-chan. Naruto asked excitedly, maybe she would finally talk to him and they could get closer, and then they would go out and. Ibaka. You forgot your stuff. Or maybe not. Sakura's right dope. I knew you couldn't match me without cheating. Why do they always think he lies or cheats? Oh yeah, he's a pranking ninja, it's kind of expected. No I didn't Sakura-chan, team, I have it all right here. He pulled out a small scroll. I sealed it. He had asked Tenten to teach him the basics of sealing, and from there he read his dad's notes. He was well on his way to becoming a seal master, all he needed was a teacher. HN, whatever how could the dope learn to do that? He must have gotten help. Whatever I don't need to seal things, I need to get stronger. Seeing as how Sasuke was ignoring him Sakura decided to as well. Naruto simply sighed replaced the scroll and put his hands behind his head. Bakashi however was proud that his student was beginning to learn seals. After walking for some time the group finally passed a suspicious puddle. Only Naruto and Kakashi noticed it. Hey, Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi looked back to see Naruto next to the puddle, but he couldn't tell what the boy was planning, because his cloak hid his body from view. Yes Naruto, the rest of the group stopped. You know what's the best part about puddles? Naruto asked while looking his sensei right in the eye. Kakashi was smiling under his mask no, what? He put his book away and covertly pointed Sasuke over to Tizuna. He saw the signal and with a smirk, quietly went over to get in a defensive position in front of the bridge builder. Sakura and Tazuna were clueless. Sometimes, if you try hard enough, you can make them scream like little girls. Naruto said while jumping high and raining kunai and senbon into the puddle. And lo and behold the dreaded demon brothers came flying out of the puddle covered in the knives and needles screaming like, well, like little girls. Bakashi didn't move, but Sasuke threw a shuriken nailing the chain connecting their gauntlets to a tree, while Naruto threw a kunai into the hole on the shuriken, locking the blade in place. Nice work team. 
Same to you dope. How? How did a fucking genin see through our perfect illusion? The leftmost of the two brothers asked. Anyone who had taken the time to pay attention to the weather could have seen through it. There hasn't been rain in a week, and it's high noon. There is no way a puddle could have been in the middle of a hot dirt road you fucking moron. Naruto exclaimed exasperatedly. Am, he's got a point. The right brother said. But he does. The first brother affirmed. Now we get into the point where Kakashi chews out the Zuna, they keep going, yada yada. So Naruto and the gang are walking along the road. Sasuke and Sakura are flirting, Sakura bothering Sasuke to the point of contemplated suicide. Kakashi and Tazuna are comparing favorite scenes in Icha Icha. And Naruto is trying to drown them out while muttering something about perverted old men. When out of nowhere Kakashi grabs Tazuna and drags him to the ground get down. Team 7 was eating dirt faster than Naruto eats Raymond, and not a moment too soon, because a huge fucking sword flew overhead and embedded itself into the tree behind them. Haha, <laughs> AI Sharingan no Kakashi. Lamachi's Abusa S class missing in of the hidden mist. Known as the demon of the mist for his skill and the silent killing techniques, as well as killing all of the participating genin in his year's genin class. Kakashi and, to everyone's surprise, Naruto stated in textbook unison. But then Naruto started to chuckle. What's so funny Gaki? Growled the missing in. He, nothing, nothing at all. Zabuza's non-existent eyebrow twitched. You know if you need eyebrows I have a friend who has more than enough to spare. At this point the vein that was throbbing before threatened to burst. Bakashi was trying so hard to not laugh, and a little while away watching in the trees, Haku was giggling under her mask, too. The others were too afraid to do anything but gape at Naruto for being so bold, I knew that kid had balls, but, this is ridiculouses. Zabuza just disappeared into the mist he had created growling like an animal all the way. They formed a tight circle around the elderly bridge builder while taking defensive stances. If Sakura, Sasuke and Tazuna were worried before they were utterly distressed now. Sensing his companion's plight Naruto turned his head to them. Don't worry you guys Kakashi-sensei will protect us, and so will I, believe it. He said while allowing them to see his carefree smile and flashing them a thumbs up. He's right you know Kakashi said while sporting his usual UI smile. Their statements visibly relaxed the three scared shitless members of the group. How could that dope not be scared? This feeling is so intense. A certain Avenger screamed in his head. Wow, Naruto sure is cool-headed right now he also looks really cool too ya he wait a minute. Please tell me you know who it is. This brat, heh, what a guy. The drunken man was glad he had this kid to back him up. Very good Naruto. Thought Kakashi, proud of his student's ability to shrug off killing intent. When he thought about it Naruto probably had to deal with this on a daily basis. He felt a little bad for ignoring his student, but he didn't have time to worry about it now. Bakashi unveiled his hidden Sharingan, and Naruto took that as a cue to activate his eyes as well. He pulled his brim down so that his teammates wouldn't find out just yet. Ah, the Sharingan. At the beginning of our fight. I'm honored Kakashi. Zabuza's voice came from all around them. Sharingan yes, I can use him to teach me how to use my own. Perfect. Sasuke thought. If I survive he added grimly. Bakashi sensei Naruto whispered while straining his eyes to find any sign of the missing in. Yeah Kakashi whispered reciprocating Naruto's actions in another direction. Can you teach me to do that voice thing? I guess, why do you want to know? It's cool and I could use it. Sure then. Thanks and say he's right behind us isn't he? Yep. Kakashi went disemboweled and in behind him with his kunai, and when he did instead of getting blood on his blade, he was treated to water. Mizubunshin. He had just enough time to say before Zabuza slit his throat. It's not over said the new Kakashi from behind Zabuza. The traps Abusa chuckled no, it certainly isn't Kakashi's eyes widened as he felt a presence behind him, he turned slicing the clone's throat in the process, only to be met with a boot to the face. He was sent soaring into the body of water behind the group, where he was promptly encased in a water prison courtesy of Zabuza. I expected more from the legendary Sharingan no Kakashi. Ha 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 ha. His insane laughter was cut short when he had to move his head to avoid the arrow that went whizzing by his head. Holy fuck. What was that? Let my sensei go. Naruto said coolly, his eyes were hidden by his hat, but you could practically feel the death glare he was presenting to the missing in. His cloak was billowing in the wind, revealing the bow in his left hand, and the six quivers facing diagonally to the right on his back. He looked very threatening. Let's see you make me twerp. Zabuza made several mizubunshin. Naruto muttered a quiet cage bunshin are better. Before his sensei finally came to his senses. No. Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura take Tazuna and run. He yelled hoping beyond all hope that he wouldn't have to see another team member die. Sorry sensei, we can't do that. You guys know why right? Naruto asked gesturing to his teammates. 
because those who don't follow the rules are trash Sasuke began while coming out of his bush on Naruto's right, looking toward said ninja turned archer. But those who abandon their friends are lower than trash. Sakura finished flanking Naruto on his left. Right. Naruto said while giving his sensei full view of his shinning smile and customary reassuring thumbs up. This is heart-wrenching and all, but I have business to attend to. Zabuza shouted as he sent his clones to attack. Sakura. Cover the client. Sasuke you're with me. Let's kick his ass. Naruto ordered in an authoritative tone. Right. Sakura said as she dashed to Tazuna's front. HMPH, whatever, just don't get in my way. Shut up and fight team. Naruto yelled while turning his bow so that it was parallel to the ground. Reaching into his white quiver he pulled out four arrows, one in between each finger, and pulled them back on his bow. But the light twang the string launched the sharp rods directly into the hearts of four out of the seven charging bunshin. Sasuke handle the rest I'll free Kakashi sensei. Whatever Sasuke ran towards his cloned opponents, who were in a triangle formation, two in front one in back, wielding a kunai in each hand. He ducked under a horizontal Zambitu strike and followed through with a jumping uppercut to the clone's right side. The clone exploded into a shower of water, and while he was still airborne the Avenger span in mid-air to deliver a devastating unconsciously chakra-aided spin kick to the clone on his left, ending its meager existence. Using the remaining momentum from his kick, he hurled both his kunai into the last target, hitting it in both the head and the stomach. Heh, cake. He said while smirking he went to look at Naruto's progress when he heard a thunderclap from his teammate's position. While Sasuke had been fending off the three clones, Naruto had retrieved an arrow from his purple quiver. The arrow had a seal on the metal arrowhead. He began to carefully pump chakra into the seal while he drew back the shot. He took aim careful not to hit his sensei. He had never used one of his special bolts before, so he didn't know what to expect. The chakra flow had been a mere trickle of chakra, but when he saw his sensei's eyes begin to glaze over a little from lack of oxygen, he lost control and forced far too much chakra into the shot. He released the bolt and thereby cut off the flow of chakra activating the seal on the tip. The result was spectacular while at the same time frightening. When the bolt left the bow it was engulfed in crackling blue electricity. It soon resembled a lightning bolt and it took off like one, two, thunder and all. Because the newly dubbed Ikazuchi Burrito no Jutsu, Thunderbolt technique. Was so close to the ground it tore up the earth that had the misfortune to be underneath it at the time. The speed was equal to that of an actual lightning bolt, so the only way Zabuza could survive was if he disengaged the prison and dodged. He did exactly that. Whoa, what power. Zabuza thought. Who the hell is this kid? He screamed while looking at the tunnel of water that had followed the arrow, rising and surrounding it as it passed. He had no doubt that it hit the other bank. Bakashi, who had taken the distraction to ready himself again, simply chuckled. He's Yuzumaki Naruto. Said Kakashi while sliding into a stance that was an exact mirror of Zabuza's. And I'm going to be the greatest Hokage ever. Said Yuzumaki shouted while thrusting his fist in the air. He then fell to one knee, winded. Huff, huff, I shouldn't be this tired. Erg. Stupid, stupid, you used way too much chakra. He berated himself inside his mind. In reality the blast from the arrow had sent him flying backwards, and he had used a lot of chakra to block the blast, as well as cushion his fall. This in conjunction with having his eyes activated the entire time, took a serious toll on his chakra. While they may not be as deteriorating as the Sharingan they still leech chakra, and he hadn't been using them enough to lessen the amount they use. Okay, you still have enough left you just used a lot at once without preparing for it. Niji said that this would happen if I did that. Just need to relax myself he took several deep breaths while trying to find his center. The blast had blown his hat off, luckily no one had seen his eyes yet. Dope. You alright you don't look so good. Sasuke said while he handed Naruto his hat, he was watching Kakashi's fight however, so he could note Naruto's peculiar eyes. Securing his hat over his eyes again, Naruto used his enhanced vision to watch the fight more closely, while saying all, worried about me Sasuke-chan. I'm touched. He then proceeded to sniffle for effect. Yeah that's a dope. Sasuke said in a tone very similar to mockery. My kami. A joke. From Ichiha Sasuke. I never thought I'd see the day. Naruto prodded. Sasuke simply shrugged, smirk in place. Perhaps Sasuke wasn't such a dick gobbler after all. After a short while Kakashi won and Zabuza was carted away by the disguised Haku. Team 7 picked up their down sensei and made their way to Tazuna's house for the rest of their mission. When they arrived after they had dropped Kakashi off in his room, they were properly introduced to Tazuna's daughter, Tsunami, and grandson, Inari. The former was friendly and outgoing, she treated them all nicely. Inari, however, was a pessimistic little ass, who gave them the cold shoulder every chance he got. Naruto could hardly care though, he got this all the time, heh, just like home. He thought gloomily. 
He hardly had time to worry about that though, he was tired as all hell. He made his way to the men's sleeping quarters, sealing all his equipment into his scroll, so that he was left with only his clothes on, and fell into unconsciousness almost before he hit the pillow. Downstairs Sasuke was brooding, the dobe he wasn't scared at all, and he took charge right away. That should have been me. How can I be so weak? And that attack. What power. I have to get stronger than Naruto or I'll never be able to beat Itachi. Sakura was worried about a crush, he seemed broodier than usual perhaps he's thinking about Naruto. Of course. Why wouldn't he be? You saw him back there didn't you? Inner Sakura offered her louder than necessary opinion. Yeah I did but, but, he didn't seem like Naruto. Sakura thought, slightly put off by Naruto's sudden change. He was cooler and calmer headed than he was pretty much at any other time she had known him. Shanrao. That's because he got serious when the fight got serious. Inner Sakura pointed out. Maybe if I was more like Naruto, Sasuke-kun would notice me. Sakura thought hopefully. I don't think Inner Sakura was silenced by thoughts of Sasuke and Sakura holding hands and other girly fantasies. Upon finding their guests in the living room, one brooding with angst rolling off him in palpable waves, and the other sitting there giggling with stars and hearts in her eyes. Tsunami and Inari just looked at each other. Then they shrugged and decided that ninja were weird. Currently Naruto as well as the rest of Team 7 had just witnessed Kakashi's explanation of tree climbing. But Naruto had something to say about it. Ah no, Kakashi-sensei. He asked slightly nervous. Yes Naruto. Kakashi asked thinking Naruto might not be able to do the exercise. Um can I talk to you in private for a second? After walking a short ways away from the rest of Team 7, Sasuke glaring holes into Naruto the whole time. When they were out of earshot Kakashi spoke up. Now, Naruto I realize you may have some trouble with this, but I'm sure you could get it eventually. While Naruto perked up at the vote of confidence he still shot a nervous look towards his crush and his rival. No that's not it, it's just that, I can kind of, already do this with my eyes closed, balancing a bowl of soup on my head, without spilling a drop. Naruto said now rubbing the back of his neck while looking at the blade of grass in between his feet. Bakashi's eyes widened, but then he realized that Naruto must have gotten training whenever they lost track of him. He resolved to finding out who after this mission was over. Well, can you do water walking? Naruto nodded, but he followed it up by saying that he could still use a lot of practice before he moved on. Kakashi then clapped once and raising his voice to address everyone present said, Okay, Sasuke, Sakura, you two start with the tree climbing, Naruto, you find a lake. I'll check up on everybody's progress from time to time. Now get to it. Sasuke was visibly shaking with rage, Sakura was slowing inching away towards a tree a safe distance from the soon-to-be ground zero. Why did the dope get different training? He obviously wasn't ready for this easy exercise, so Kakashi must have sent him to do something even easier, yes, that's it, that's it exactly. There is no way the dead last could be better than him. Smirking at his deduction he sent a condescending stare in Naruto's general direction. Naruto let out a sigh of relief, he barely got out of that one, he was sure Sasuke would explode. While he didn't necessarily get along with Iachiha he still saw him as a friend and didn't want to lose him. Their training continued for several days, ever wary of an attack from Zabuza or his hunter buddy. One day after training, during dinner, while everyone was talking about the mission Inari decided to state his opinion on the matter. Why do you even try? Gato will just kill you all you should just give up. He shouted standing up. Needless to say this outburst shocked everyone. But Naruto simply brushed it off. That's because I'm different than you. I never give up, no matter what. He said leaning back in his chair. Shut up. You don't know. You've never had a rough life. You are always being stupid and joking around. I'm not like you. You don't know pain. Inari retorted tears freely falling from his young face. Now, Kakashi may not have known Naruto well, but he knew him enough to know a little bit about his life, and of course his temper. He prepared to incapacitate his student if necessary, keeping his eye trained on the blonde chameleon. The rest of Team 7 was oblivious. I don't know pain. He began to laugh I don't know pain. He laughed harder I don't know pain. He threw his back and begun to bellow laughter. Sasuke and Sakura were defiantly put off by this display. Kakashi tensed, this might get ugly. Naruto's fits of laughter died down Inari staring incredulously at him the whole time. Inari, I've known more pain than most people will know in their entire lifetime. Naruto said locking eyes with the sad boy while sporting a sad smile. I'll never forget the hollow feeling of being alone, or the pain of hatred, but you have your mother and grandfather her for you. Your father wouldn't want you to waste your time crying over him. At this point he had stood up and was making his way towards the door. If you have felt so much pain how can you smile Inari shouted. The life of a shinobi is short, Inari. It's kill or be killed. I live my life to the fullest. 
But, I don't cry, my tears have run out long ago, there's no place for tears in the life I want to live. So cheer up and honor his memory by making your life full. He said over his shoulder. But that he left. Sasuke was silent, but his head was hanging low. Sakura was shocked at how much sadness could flow through his voice and his eyes. Naruto is that true Kakashi sensei? Is his life really like that? She asked looking towards her sensei to find him gazing into his tea. Sighing he answered, unfortunately, yes, it is Sakura. I don't know personally but I can assure you, he was being modest when he said that he had felt more pain than anyone should. He knows what it means to be strong. Sakura now felt rather guilty about her treatment of the blonde. The Nari was just looking at the spot where Naruto had entered the forest through the window, a look of awe plastered onto his face. Tazuna stared into his sake, and his daughter let a few unseen tears fall into the dish she was cleaning for the boy. He knows what being alone is like, just like me. Maybe maybe he isn't such a dope after all. Sasuke was thinking. There was an awkward silence after that. But Naruto. While he stayed calm in the house he had been forced into a blind rage by the time he entered the forest, the kid brought up some bad memories. While he wasn't about to get mad at Inari he still had to relieve some pent-up emotions. He began pacing back and forth, throwing Senbin into a tree about 50 meters away from him, without even looking, cursing and kicking rocks this way and that. If one were to look at the tree he was currently punishing though, they would see that all the Senbin had hid in the same place. Not only that, but each needle had been so accurately thrown that they would split the one before it directly down the middle before halting in the tree. Once he had run out of the needles he began to punch the tree next to him repeatedly roaring and shouting the whole time. When he had finally run out of steam he was pretty sure he had broken both his, currently bloody, hands. Resting his back against a, now dented and partially bloody, tree he slid down and fell into a dreamless leap. The next morning. Aku walked merrily down the dirt path, quietly humming to herself while keeping an eye out for herbs. She heard a faint snoring, looking to the left she saw a pile of leaves. Upon closer inspection she found it was the cloaked boy who had almost killed Zabuza. Looking around she spied the Senban tree, her eyes widened a bit, had the boy done that? He was better than her. She quietly approached, her training making her silent and incredibly deadly. Her hand slowly reached towards his neck, only one swift movement, and his threat would be erased. Only, one, swift, twist she couldn't do it. She didn't want to kill him, although she knew she might have to eventually. Instead of twisting his neck into an unnatural angle, she opted instead to slightly shake him. Hey, wake up, you'll catch cold if you sleep here. She said trying to awaken the snoring rock that was Uzumaki Naruto. He grumbled a little and sank a little lower into his cloak, mumbling something about five more minutes. Haku smiled at his cute antics. When he finally woke up he spotted the girl and smiled. Hey, you wake me up Nisan chan Haku simply nodded. Well, thanks, I might have missed breakfast. He said while chuckling a little, she joined him, he really was cute. You picking herbs Nisan. She tilted her head and said, call me Haku, and yes I am. How could you tell? She asked with a small smile. Naruto blushed a little at the very cute smile she had. Oh, you um, I could s smell them. I've got a pretty good nose. She accepted his answer, and they began to pick them together. She started to talk with him about the importance of protecting your precious people, and when she asked him if he had anybody to protect his head hang low having his hat block his face from view. She thought she might have offended him or hit a soft spot, and technically she was right. Who did he have to protect? Who was precious to him? Hiroka sensei Lee. Tenten. Sakura. Old man Hoka he smirked under his shadowy veil. He looked up and met her weary gaze and answered her question with a happy smile I sure do. I'm going to protect my whole village. I'll be the greatest Hokage because if protecting people makes you strong, then I'll be the strongest ninja in the world. I will protect everyone. He said his smile growing with every sentence. Haku was a little taken aback by his proclamation of his goal, but she too found herself smiling. That is a good dream Naruto-kun. You can do it. I believe in you. He was blushing again, she believed in him. Not many people ever took his dream seriously. A comfortable silence crept over the field and they continued to pick herbs. I think that I have enough now Naruto-kun. Thank you. No problem Haku-chan. Anytime. He replied with a thumbs up. She smiled and while she began to leave she left him with one last tidbit of information. Oh yes, by the way, I'm a boy. She said while smiling waiting for his shocked expression. She knew how she looked, but she didn't want to be treated like a woman in a fight. What she wasn't expecting was his laughter. Ha ha ha. Don't, ha ha, don't even try bullshitting me on that one. When I said I had a good nose I meant it. At her confused look he continued, I can smell your pheromones, they are clearly female. Besides no guy could ever look that cute. Ever. She blushed a little at the unintended compliment. 
he got up and prepared to leave, but he also had a little info to tell her, oh, and tells Abusa to get well soon. Courtesy of Yuzumaki Naruto. He chuckled at her shocked expression. Yes, you have a very unique scent Haku-chan. You smell like snow. It's nice. His back was turned and he was already walking away, but had he been facing her, he would have been rewarded with a fully blushing Haku, with cross-dressing action. Time skipped, like, two days, or something. Team 7, minus Naruto, had gone to protect Azuna at the bridge, leaving Naruto at the drunk's house, completely drained from training. He was roused from his dreams of Raymond and Hokage hats, by screams about someone killing herself if they touched her son. Dispelling his weights her silently made his way downstairs to asses the situation. The Nari charged the two thugs holding his mom hostage, he may die, but he was going to at least try to save her, that's what his dad would have done, what Naruto would do. Right before the two would-be samurai could dice the boy a green blur had passed right in between the two. The Nari stared wide-eyed as the two kidnappers fell to the ground, unconscious. Looking up from the knocked-out thugs his breath hitched, there stood the boy, no, the hero, who had suffered so much only to smile. Naruto stood there back turned, fists down by his sides, his cloak billowing in the wind, and his brim pulled down low to cover his eyes. Can anyone say badass? Naruto looked at Inari and smiled, you did well Inari, you stood up for your beliefs and were brave in the face of danger. Good job, I'm sure your father is proud. But, if these punks are here then that means there's trouble at the bridge. Get the villagers, we're gonna need an army. He said while unsealing his bow and quivers. Inari gave a salute while he beamed at his new hero, sure thing Naruto T-I-C-H-O-U captain. With the plan set in motion Naruto sped off towards the bridge, hoping beyond hope that his friends were still alright. When he arrived he was treated to the side of Dome of Ice surrounding his eternal rival as Lee and Guy would say. Thinking quickly he swiftly reached into his red quiver and rapidly fired several of the special arrows into the sky with blinding speed he said Hiki no Akuma, 1. The arrows flew high into the heavens, each becoming completely engulfed in a huge flame and each descending toward a mirror. It truly did look like hell had rained its flames down onto the earth. The streaks of flame screaming down creating the very image of the devil's tears they were named after. Naruto had arrived and there was hell to pay. 37 mirrors, 37 arrows, 37 hits. Each arrow hit a respective mirror and, to Haku and Sasuke's amazement, they actually cracked the mirrors. Haku quickly repaired the damage. Cursing Naruto sprang into action jumping in front of his friend as to alleviate some stress from the current pincushion genin. Sasuke, while put off that Naruto was able to do more damage than him, sent an appreciative nod to the blonde archer. Naruto just smirked and said, well, I couldn't have you die before I kicked your ass, could I? Sasuke shook his head while smirking, he had activated his Sharingan earlier, and while they were talking Haku had taken the opportunity to fire a few Senban. Watching their trajectory Sasuke pushed Naruto out of the way taking the fatal hit himself. He fell to the ground, limp, and seemingly lifeless. Naruto could only watch in shock, as his friend fell, dead, because he was too weak to protect himself. Haku began to try and console him on his loss, but he wasn't paying attention. Rage, pure rage, flowed through Naruto's veins. His heart became an organ of anger, hate, and remorse. A burning sensation filled his body, and his soul as a strange red chakra began to freely flow from his tinketsu. His appearance warped, red slitted eyes, deeper whisker marks, clawed hands, the works. He rushed, faster than the frost maiden could follow, towards the scent of snow. Smashing his fist into her masked face destroying the mirror and sending her flying. Then to prevent it from happening again, he flickered from mirror to mirror destroying each with a vicious punch or devastating kick. Aku picked herself up and watched in horror as he walked, slowly changing back to his original form, towards her. She was injured, there was no denying it. She had failed. Kill me, Naruto-kun. I'm useless now I've failed Zabuza-san. I've killed your friend take your revenge and kill me. She said, not a trace of fear in her voice, only disappointment. You're wrong, he's not dead. He looked back, she was shocked how could he tell. You saw the senban in the tree when you found me right. I did that, you think I don't know a thing or two about anatomy. Sasuke will be fine in a few days and so will you. No. I've failed my master. I have no use. I must be disposed oh she would have finished if Naruto hadn't slapped her. She was wide-eyed in shock. He grabbed her by the collar with both hands and brought her to eye level with him. What do you mean? You have your whole life ahead of you. He shouted shaking her a little. Naruto-kun I have no regrets, but Zabuza was my life. His dreams were my dreams. I've failed him. She replied a little teary-eyed. Don't you get it? Run, Haku. Get Zabuza and run. You can still achieve your dreams. You don't have to die here. I won't kill you, he said loosening his grip. She could only stare, he was giving her a second chance. Zabuza and her could still achieve his dream, she still had a chance. 
She her thoughts were interrupted by the sound of thousands of birds chirping. She and Naruto looked to see Kakashi through the thinning mist, holding a glowing ball of lightning, preparing to charge a currently incapacitated Zabuza. Zabuza. Haku screamed she created a mirror of ice and warped to his side. What happened next happened in slow motion to Naruto. He began to run, his arm outstretched, attempting to catch her, to stop her from what she was doing. Even without his weights on he was no match for her speed. She took the Chidori full in the chest. Haku-chan. He screamed his voice filled with anguish. He made it to the trio only a moment after impact, and he shoved Kakashi aside, forcing his arm out of her. He cradled her in his arms. Tears threatening to spill, Haku, Haku. Come on. You can make it, come on. The girl merely smiled at him her eyes already glazing over. I'm not going to make it Naruto-kun. She coughed violently, spraying blood on his face, not that he cared. He pulled her closer grasping her in hopes that if he held tight enough she wouldn't leave. Bakashi and Zabuza didn't have the heart to interrupt the spectacle. Akuchan Naruto muttered into her hair. She pulled her head back slightly to look him in the eyes. Yes. He sniffed back tears. I am as sorry I hit you before. She managed a small smile while she chuckled. I it's all right Naruto-kun. He smiled. Glad he could make her smile in her last few moments. Naruto-kun, make me a promise. Anything. Just name it. He said in desperation. Make me the promise that you'll be the greatest hokage the world has ever known, but don't kill your heart to do it. For me, live a life with no regrets, like I have. She said smiling, cupping his cheek in one hand. I promise. And I never be break those. He said while holding the hand on his face. She then leaned forward, and before he could tell her to save her strength, she kissed him right on the lips. A short chaste kiss, but a kiss nonetheless. He was utterly stunned that it never happened before, he didn't count the Sasuke incident. She smiled at his expression before she whispered in his ear, Goodbye, Naruto-kun. Her hand fell from his face and hit the pavement of the bridge with a dull thud. Her heart stopping after it had labored through the massive injury to her chest. Naruto completely broke down, he pulled her body close and sobbed into the crook of her neck. Kakashi couldn't help but feel immensely guilty for doing that to his student. Zabuza didn't shed tears, but he felt defeated, angry, and sad. That's when the true enemy made his appearance. Gato's cackling laughter could be heard throughout the bridge. So, Zabuza it seems your tool has outlived its usefulness. Heh, I was gonna kill her anyway, after I had a little fun that is. Heh heh ha ha ha. He then began to reveal his plan about pitting them against each other and killing the survivors, but Naruto wasn't paying attention. After he had insulted the valiant ninja in his arms, Naruto began to feel the anger return even stronger than before. Bakashi had thrown Zabuza a kunai, and the demon had begun his charge, but Naruto also had plans. Taking a kunai in his mouth as well as his left hand, he hefted Zabuza's Zambatu in his right with ease he didn't intend on keeping the giant fucking thing he just wanted to cause a lot of pain. To a lot of people. The cleaver seemed to be the best tool for the job. Then the two demons charged the group of mercenaries, slaughtering their way to their target. While Zabuza was tired and injured from his battle with Team 7 Sensei Naruto was practically at 100%, but also being fueled by his Kaiubi influenced rage. He stabbed one thug in the back of the skull, slicing the throat of another with his mouth's kunai, while he disemboweled one on his right with a massive cleaver. Zabuza was faring slightly worse taking several mercenaries down, but receiving his fair share of wounds. When they finally made it Gato he had shit himself from the combined killing intent. Zabuza charged while Naruto jumped in the air. Using his chakra and wind affinity he began to spin rapidly, gaining speed with every rotation. He added a few more directions to his spin, making him a ball of death. Zabuza saw this, and he rushed behind the short tyrant and kicked his soon-to-be corpse into the Naruto blade ball, while he and the blonde Jinchuriki said in perfect unison Ken Hanabi blade fireworks. The results were stupendous while horrific. Upon enter the spinning storm of blades Gato was introduced to a level of pain he didn't know existed. For the first few moments none of the cuts were fatal, but extremely painful, almost as if Naruto had planned it that way. Gato announced his pain through his blood-curdling screams. Then once the blades began to hit full force when he neared the center his body was torn asunder, and each part of him has sliced, diced, and filleted into bloody confetti. Naruto landed, stopping his spin directly as he set foot on land, and the bloody rain that was once Gato fell around him, only making him look that much more demonic. The remaining bandits felt a little weak in the knees, but once Abusa dropped they got some confidence back. They began to make threats, so Naruto made his favorite seal. Soon no less than 20 Naruto's, each wielding a replica Zambitu, appeared next to their master. Bakashi, seeing this as a moment to step in, created some cage bunshin as well. The thugs still felt tough thinking neither had enough fight left in them to continue decided to try their luck. 
But before they could take a single step an arrow flew through the air and embedded itself in the ground at their feet. They looked up to find Inari with an actual army of villagers. Naruto spoke up leave, or you die with the rest of the scum. The bandits lost all confidence and ran like hell out of there. The villagers cheered their victory over Gato, and Naruto just gave Inari a thumbs up for a job well done, an action the young boy reciprocated. Naruto dropped the cleaver and made his way over to the bridge. He stopped to pick up Haku. Hey, Kakashi-sensei, can you get Zabuza? They deserve a proper burial. Kakashi could only nod while he hefted the deceased devil and said devil's huge sword. How could Naruto wield this like it was just a kunai? He screamed in his head. After they buried the two missing in they paid their respects, but Naruto stayed. He stayed well into the night finally taking one item with him before he made his way back to the house to clean himself and sleep. He brought Haku's broken mask as a reminder of his promise to the girl who opened his eyes to true strength. Soon after, with Team Seven's help, the bridge was finished. The four ninjas said their goodbyes and made their way home. Naruto promising to return someday to see how everyone had feared. After very little deliberation the name was chosen for the bridge, the Great Naruto Bridge. Named after the hero of Wave, a boy who could inspire nations, Yuzumaki Naruto. The inscription on either side of the bridge read. The trip home had been miserably quiet, Naruto had been deep in thought thinking over his promise. No regrets, but that didn't mean he had to perk up instantly. His solemn demeanor had even influenced Sakura to not pester Sasuke, a fact that Sasuke silently thanked the blonde for. Bakashi was thinking over his students' reactions to the seriousness of their previous situation. Sasuke fraud and, to protect Naruto, took several fatal-looking senbin in his stead. Perfect. Sakura had done exactly as I told her and stayed back to protect Azuna, even after Sasuke was in danger. Excellent. Naruto Naruto suffered loss and had his first kill make that kills, I have to talk with him about it. As if on cue Naruto walked up and pulled on Kakashi's sleeve, pulling his attention out of his thoughts and his book. Yes Naruto. Kakashi sensei I lost control back there I don't want to lose control again. When I killed those guys I knew they deserved it for what they had done, but I still feel sick. I'm not a monster. Am I? Naruto said with remorse in his eyes. Though he didn't show it Kakashi was proud of all of his students for their actions in the mission, but right now he was proudest of Naruto for showing the determination to take control of his condition and for letting him know that his student wasn't some mindless killer. Naruto, if you ever feel like that again, remember to fight it, remember that you don't its power to be strong. And killing will get easier but you should only kill those who you feel truly deserve death. Those men they truly had deserved it you did the right thing. I'm proud of you. Naruto managed a small true smile up to his sensei. Thanks, I needed that sensei. Naruto then began to perk up a little and it did wonders to relieve the group of the malas that had settled upon them from the end of their battle. Bakashi gave himself a pat on the back for helping his students get into a somewhat normal groove again. Upon seeing the questioning looks from his young charges he realized he had actually been patting himself on the back. When he told them what he had been doing Sasuke and Sakura had blank stares and sweat drops forming on the backs of their heads while well, Naruto just sat there. He started to chuckle, then laugh, then the rest of the group began to laugh just as hard. They had already been near Konoha, but when they finally got the gate the guards were treated to a peculiar sight. The last of the Achiha was leaning against a demon brat who had his arm around the Kinoichi of the year's shoulders, while the legendary copy nin, Sharingan no Kakashi, was holding his forehead in his left hand while his head was thrown back following the group up. The strangest part was that they were all laughing like lunatics. One guard looked to the other and asked the obvious question, what the hell is so goddamned funny? The other guard simply shook his head telling his companion that he'd better not ask. Some ninjas were just really fucked up. To be continued. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.